present the issues and the challenges that we're facing now as we try to reconstruct our ditches after the fire. So go ahead, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Start. Okay. Uh, well, my name is uh, Carlos Arellano, and I'm uh, for Gilbert says I'm uh, elected as county clerk now in Mora County, and uh, I'm the Margomo of two Secas. Seca Madre de Holma and Seca uh, de Ariano in history. And uh, I've been inside of a ditch since I was about five, six years old, since I could drag a shovel. That was my first task. If I could handle the shovel, I could go to work. But I couldn't use it, so I just drug it. I drug it to the ditch behind all the guys. That was my job, to carry a shovel all day long and get strong enough to use it. Um, the whole thing is, is uh, if you look at water, it's like the internet. It's all connected. It comes from the Pecos Wilderness, comes down to the valley. Uh, we got it connected. Uh, Seca de la Serra connects to the Seca Madre. The Seca Madre connects to the Mora River. The Mora River connects to the Seca de la Morada. We're all connected. We're all connected in some form or another. And uh, basically, this water comes out of all of these watersheds that the federal government burnt for us. Uh, they chose to. That's my opinion. When they started this fire, there was a reason behind it. And uh, I, I honestly believe they wanted to pull this water out of here. But the thing is that the people, the local people from here, the state DOT, uh, with a little bit of money, was able to help us out and start getting these things cleaned up to restore our watersheds and to keep the water flowing. Uh, the whole thing is is that if anyone's used a shovel, they, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a grip of work. Our secas got so flooded we couldn't use shovels anymore to clean them. We needed backhoes, we needed uh, excavators, we needed uh, all kinds of equipment. That's what it's turned to now. Um, the whole thing is is that uh, we're in a, a state of desperation now. We're going to come to Monsoon again and it's going to hit us again. But uh, what I see now is that we only have certain areas that we have to take care of and, and things that we've got to mitigate now and get prepared to get ready to get hit again. It's, it's okay, it's not gonna take, it's not gonna beat us. Water can't beat us, water's our friend. That's the only thing that, that is God given and 98% and of our bodies are made from it. And that's only the gift that we have is we share that water. Not, not one ditch just holds it. We just don't turn on the faucet and say, we're gonna take 10 million gallons because it's our ditch and we're gonna take everybody's water. When we don't need that water, we let it loose and we let it go to the next ditch, next person down the road. And that's just the way it is. Nobody owns that water. It's God-given. <clears throat> That's why we work so hard to keep it rolling. Um, I feel uh, generationally, uh, I got my sons working on, on the secas, and we got, soon enough, we'll have grandkids, and I'll have grandkids. And I do have grandkids. They have helped me. And my grandkids will have kids soon, and they'll be in the ditch with us, too. That's just part of what we do. Um, I was born and raised in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I was the only one in the family. But as soon as I turned old enough to do what I had to do, I, I moved over here on my own. I, I moved back when I was 14. The city's not for me. There's a difference between a channel and an irrigation ditch. An irrigation ditch is to disperse water at a really slow, moderate rate. It, if water is running too fast, it'll erode, it'll tear up your ground. So uh, secas weren't designed to be dealt, uh, dug and built deep. But what, there's, what the process of a ditch is, is, is you want volume. And you want that volume really, really slow and moderate and you want it to spray it out. When FEMA got here, they, they, the world's biggest entity says that they said that they didn't know what a seca was. They didn't know what it meant. They didn't know what the word was. Because they're used to seeing concrete channels in every city. Channels disperse water. Take it away. Uh, they take it as fast as they can out of the area. And what we have today here is arroyos, right? That's, that's what we use the arroyos for. Yeah. And that's what desaguas are for. They're built into our ditches. We open them up, but some of the components in our ditch were broken, so they weren't working when the flood came, so we couldn't, we couldn't use those things. And now it's a year and a half later, and we're asking for those things to be designed and built. And... Uh, it's not happening again because there's like 30 entities trying to get, get to here and they all want to go through our ditch and, 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 and give us a description of what's wrong with it. And then they talk about it for four, five, six, seven months and then they come back with an idea. And we've already got it figured out. Most of us are doing what we have to do 
to collectively make the water flow. Because we're not going to wait on anyone any longer. You know, it's just, it was here, the water was here thousands of years before I was here. And it's going to stay here. And, and that's only, the only thing that can keep that water here is us. It's people like us. People that need it, want to use it, and, and hand it down. Like I said, uh, my grandfather was the same Maradomo, the same Aseca, and, and, and he's in this magazine, 1979 magazine, and, uh, New Mexico magazine. And he explained uh, how those waters were brought down. And uh, there's an article in here that describes uh, that they used a whiskey bottle half full for a level. But they didn't explain that part that they needed that whiskey to dig that ditch, you know. <laughs> they, they, they had to drink that stuff just so they could get through that rock. You know what I mean? It was, it was a tough task. It took years and years and years to get that water down here. And, and like I said, it, it kind of fell apart. You know, in 17 floods that hit us in, in the Holman area. I don't know how many floods uh, these gentlemen have had in the same in the same area. Probably the same or more. But we're all like all in the same catch 2020. And uh, if you have any questions for me later on, or or, or uh, need to know anything, uh, uh, what's coming to us? I have a lot of uh, I have a lot of uh, information on mitigation. I have a lot of information on. Uh, Stafford Act monies, state DOT monies. Uh, we've got NRCS coming into bat now. Uh, when I see the federal government, they, they do federal talk. They talk federal language. They don't talk real talk like we talk. They talk circles. And what's wrong with the government is that they destroyed these ditches with a fire. Now, now the flood took over and finished destroying them. But the thing is, they're still trying to lowball us. They're, they're going to try and take us for the right of our life but it's not gonna happen because most of us already have purchased equipment and we're gonna keep going with what we got, with or without state help or federal monies. It doesn't matter anymore. Like I said, we got to that point that we've already figured it out. The whole thing is is it that, that uh, when federal monies come in, it turns into a money grab. It's senseless, a senseless amount of money being spent on, on, on a set gas. But it is what it is. Now I know why, why, why things happen this way, because the federal government owns the money machine. So what do they do when they need money? They just make more. And where does it go? Where does that money go? It goes to all their friends, to all their friends from all over the United States that come and come to these disaster areas and do this work. Most of the contractors that are here are from out of state, and they're taking all the big money. The truth of the matter is, is that's just the way the world is. And we got to deal with it. And like I said, if more people come and show up, see what's going on. If you get in the ditch and you, and you see the, the work that some of us have done and, and, and the work we've done, um, it's very appreciated. But the thing is that when things turn into money, it, it's get, it gets difficult. And, we, and it, it actually stops us from doing what we're doing. It, it, access, it stops us from going forward. Because, like I said, they wanted this water to escape because it's, it's needed. Half of our water goes to, into the Mississippi River, the other half goes on the Rio Grande. So what's down there? You got every major city out that way. You got Albuquerque, you got Texas, you got whatever's this way. And, and, and who, who are us? What are, what are we? We're, we're just a small group of people. You know what they're saying? That we don't need this water. That we, well, they, it could go right by us and they need it. So that's, that's another thing that's coming to a task, on, on, and I'm asking all the SECAS to include on their bylaws anymore that water, their water rights can never be sold, with, unless it's sold within their SECA. That's hard to follow that. You covered, no, no, you're you co you covered everything. No, this is bad. Um, he, he knows what's going on. It's, also. Uh, the SECAS are culture. I mean, I got, I got two little boys, and they're in there with us cleaning. I mean, it's our way of life. It's... I just came here now from cutting hay and trying to get that stuff going, and that's been happening for five generations in my family. So it's uh, it's more than just water; it's our way of life. So, I mean, Carlos covered a bunch of what else is going on, but uh, most important is it's 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 life for us down here. Yeah. Uh, I have a question for you, gentlemen. I'm the Campo Fresco, and I was a Mayo for 28 years in Sequoia de San Isidro, coming out of North Fork Lake. And uh, the purpose of water is not to own, it's to share. So you got to go backwards. 
You got to go backwards and you got to get your documentation. You got to take it with you. It's the people that come in that want to sell the water or want to put it in a faucet and control it in that manner, do these kind of things. But if you got documentation saying you think can't divert a ditch and, and, and turn it to the right just because they don't want you to have water here to the left, and I know they did that to you, but it's going to take probably all the whole association with you to do to make those people not change their mind, force them to do what's right. Because they're wrong. I know they're wrong. You know they're wrong. I've, I've seen it. I've seen that happen hundreds of places. I've seen people, this magazine shows the, the Seca de la Sierra was running straight from Icarita Peak straight to Holman for probably 300 years. Then they got a finger, finger ditch later on and, and took it to, branched it to Encinal. When we were in job, Encinal was taking all the water because we couldn't take it down 24 miles because by the time it got to Holman, it would be about that much water and we couldn't use it. So we allowed it. But now that there's plenty of water, they can't even handle the part that they were actually taking more of. So now, now we have to go back to the drawing board and we got to build a three-way this way up there because when I used to go up there with my, my grandfather, it was a caja de madera. It was explaining, it was lumber that was built into the ground and, and it had a board that you'd pull, the water would go straight to Holman. A board you'd pull up this way, you'd go to Picuris, and you'd pull a board this way and you'd go to Encinal. It was called a three-way reparte. What they went and did is they went and destroyed that with a bunch of machine, machinery and they put something in there to divide, something called a, a cutthroat bogus deal. They went with, with, with a couple of other entities with this magical thing to separate the cutthroat, to keep the cutthroat up on top and, and the German brown below. It was just the inner... Given that we're using money right now in the Stafford Act to do a conjunction work with DOT and uh, FEMA, uh, I, I want, as Mar Domos, I want you to let this group know that have you spent more time now doing all this paperwork and legwork than we did in the past? or? How do you see it? Because I know you're not on payroll, okay? But the people that are showing up to give you the, the advice or tell you this or that or grant you permission, they're on payroll, correct? So, but I want to let the group know how much time you're putting into these projects to help your communities get water and how difficult it has been. There's uh, countless hours spent walking the ditch, um, going to meetings just to make sure you're getting your paperwork turned in, um, being able to log on a website that half the people can't use. Um, and then there's, like I said, countless walkthroughs. I think I've walked the ditch more this year than I have cleaning the ditch for 15 years. So, and it's the same thing. They, they write stuff down and say, oh, you gotta do this, you gotta do this. And then you do all that and you still wait for them to, to get back to you. And it's emails and time and it's, a, it's kind of a big headache to, to get anywhere with, with FEMA. The, the people at FEMA, they're nice. And that they're helpful, but just their whole process is just, it's, it's time consuming and it's, it's exhausting. And like me, I work 50, 60 hours a week and then trying to do that on top of that, it's, 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 it's kind of hard. Um, yeah. What I understand is that FEMA, the contractors for them are getting $181 a foot. FEMA the big contractors. Then they subcontract to somebody else here. The, the FEMA guys that come out here and do this with us, that mitigate and, and, and are write, writing the documentation down, they get $500 a day per diem. So imagine what their checks are. These are paper, these are paper people. Not nobody digging. They're just paper. Okay, $500 a day per diem, and you know their che check is a lot sweeter than that. <laughs> so, okay, so I got like 600 hours on my day. They already cut me off. They already cut me off of, 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 of I can only go up to 5% of what the cost of the damage of the ditch that I work on. So I can't, I can't put in no more hours. My wife has about a thousand hours on this uh, set already. And that's like what Emilio says, you know why? Because nothing works. You know why? Because they don't want nothing to work. That's just the way it is. It doesn't work because they don't want it to work. Because they're going to, at the end of the game, they're going to lowball us. We, one more year, then they're going to throw all this stuff at us and our claims and everything and say, you're not ready, bye-bye, you -bye. we'll see you later. Years over. That's it. That's all that's going to happen if, if we don't start making noise today.
Yeah, Carlos, did you guys go ahead and start working on the ditch? And Litigation, I'm starting today, and I had it cleaned six, three months ago. I started today. I started asking for help. July, I got on my phone. I think the, the first flood that hit us was around July, July 5th, I think. Since July 5th of last, last year. year. Yeah. And yeah, I've been asking for help. We got water in the ditch. But did you get the parcels? Just did you guys do it yourselves? The our ditch? Yeah. Well, no, no, we hired a contractor that shattered the ditch. He got on top of it with a charcoal and blew it up. See, that's the other piece. Yeah, because the uh, concrete ditch you can't ride on top of it. They disconnected all the all the all the pipes that go into the field and all kinds of things. So we had a lot. I was the second ditch that got clean, so we were kind of a little green at the situation. By the time they got halfway through the ditch, I threw them off. I said, "That's enough." You know, I mean. I'll just take the I'll just take the beating if we have to get it out with shovel. But I'll tell you one thing: there was over a thousand federal people that saw that ditch, and if they would have took one shovel and one shovel dirt out of there, we would have cleaned it. And then those are people from Washington D.C. and all, all over the United States. They went inside. They took pictures. But they didn't do anything. You should have had a bunch of shovels there for that. <laughs> well, I mean, they just didn't. <laughs> it was just not going to happen. Yes, sir. Yeah, but so I have a question for you guys, just based on some observations that I've seen, especially around when tons of money gets stuffed in a situation like ours, right? Now that there's money in water and in acequias uh, and parasites coming down from all over, you, and, and like you say, the water, they want it to go south, away, right? Do you see attempts by now people with a bunch of money with access to political authority uh, attempting to seize control of the, the acequias either by, I call it body snatching, like the, the, the acequia you know, organizations or committees and things like that. Do you see these attempts to sort of replace or replicate, you know, your ability to run the acequias by people who will rubber stamp ideas that will send water away or anything like that yet? No, not like that. Okay, well, good. That's encouraging. Well, but what I see is uh, you got people from Colorado coming in to do research on properties because they want to buy it. They want to buy anything that has a river front or a, a, a second in it because they want to sell that water, right? They, they did up, up there already in Colorado. But they're not attempting to take over the Asequia? No, but they're looking for properties. I, me as a county clerk, they're doing research and they're looking for lands that have water connected to it so they can buy it. And they're mostly companies from New York and, and big, 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 big companies. And they're doing a lot of research and they're trying to buy all these properties so they can sell it later on down the road. Because once enough people can control that kind of land, then they can come together and then they can say, we want to sell it. And they'll do it. Because that's what they did up in Colorado. So th that's what's happening. And then the recreational, we got squatters all the way up to the wilderness now growing. So there's, there's guys growing all over the place. It's just stealing the water right off the right off the set, yeah, right off the whatever we got. See, that, that's the next big thing that'll happen. That, that happened in California and everywhere else. It was legal before here. So there, there's just a lot of issues that we're going to be dealing with. You got a lot of people that want to grow recreational legally. They need a commercial license. It's against the law in the state of New Mexico to get a recreational, uh, a commercial license. But state engineer's office is still giving them the permit. So the county has to fight him and say no. And that's a really water intensive crop. Yeah, because the state wants everybody to grow. They want them to grow weed now because they need the tax money. But I don't see nothing on the return. We haven't seen nothing on the return of the tax money. I hear that they're making millions and up to billions of dollars a year. But how, how good are our roads? Have they been resurfaced? Are they they're full of holes? Where's the money? Where's the money? I mean, that, that, that's what it's supposed to be for, the recreational money. What the money is supposed to be? I haven't seen a whole patch in water for a year or two. Mm -hmm. But Carlos, wasn't there, wasn't there a law passed in the last session that, that uh, attached the water to the land and it had to go through the, as it traditionally has been done, but it had to go through the commission to approve or not approve the water right being separated from the land? Well, we, we, we have never allowed that. 
Right. And more accounting. Right. And, and that's what I, that's well, what I hope. Is what I'm saying in this last session. Well, we have to, then we have to write our own re resolution to match it okay. in this county. Uh -huh. uh, otherwise, it, it serves us no, no purpose. We got to have the support to back that same, that same resolution up. And how's that different from the, the water bank? Wasn't there a water bank? Or the water bank? There's no such thing. Okay. Everybody, has, every ASEC has different bylaws. They can in, invent or intervene, whatever they want. It's their own governing body. If they follow the rules, if they want to bank it, let's just say I, I want to bank my water to Emilio for the next 10 years because I'm gone. Legally, I really couldn't do it. I, but if it's allowed within the Aseca, then if they said okay, and he would use my water when I was gone for those 10 years, he would be like double dipping, but that's not really cool, though. <laughs> you know, that's, that's kind of like what we do amongst ourselves. We, we, you kind of like, what I do as a Maradona, when, when we go through the, the, the rotation and somebody wants it again, and somebody doesn't want it, then I tell them, you lose your shot. If you don't want the water, it goes to the next guy. If they don't want it, then they lose it. And then I'll go back and start again. We don't bank it. Because then a guy, then, then you get a guy turning into a water hog, and that guy will put water in his field for 20 days, and then what happens to the field? It turns into a pond. It's, it's really worthless. It just turns into grass. See, see if, if you irrigate right, the water is supposed to flow slow and cover it all. And then you take it off, and then the heat makes it grow. If you see pastures that get water on 24 hours a day for days and days and days, it stays that big, it dies. Just overwatered. But, I mean, everybody does things different. I, I, I know guys that, I've seen guys that run water until there's like a, a pond in their field and all the birds are having a good time, but nobody else is getting water. Just the way it is. I mean, some, some people are different. But, uh, yeah, if, if, uh, if you guys have any more questions, I, I'm available in medium. I don't know. Well, it's not a question, but it's like a statement that the fire from last year is a threat to the culture because Asequias is the culture, it's our way of life, right? If the Asequias are in danger, we can do the things that the people here do with the Asequias. So I think it's very important, this message, that the people, more people know what is happening here in this uh, mitigation or I don't know how to call that. I, everything that happened to us at wise on, on them getting uh, flooded and busted up came from the fire. If the fire, if they wouldn't have burned so many acres of land, we wouldn't have had that much damage. But the fire was 95 miles long, 55 miles across. They brought that fire in circles for, what, three and a half months. Burn a box of matches. Burn a box of matches. I fought fire for 28 years. How long does it take to burn a box of matches? Second, with wind. Now put a box of matches over there, over there, over there, all over the place, and then burn it, and then bring it back with wind. You can make a fire go in circles for years, for, for months, for months. And, and, and notice everything north of 518, and then when it jumped in Holman, when it got to Holman, oh, what's burned? Every single watershed. It skipped a lot of the, the land in between, because they were, that wasn't the, the point. They were going, they wanted that water to be. They called it a hundred. They told us that in four or five years that we're going to be the happiest people in the world, because we're going to have water now, because the water was staying clogged up up there because of the hundred year burn. There's a hundred year burn that was supposed to, that's supposed to happen every year in all these areas. So it didn't happen here because the government wouldn't allow it to burn because of all the homes that are built up there. But I spoke with every firefighter that was here from, I mean, I, I spoke with firefighters from New York City to Mexico. There was like hundreds of guys and there was, there was 3,000 people here at one time and they were all parked at the highway on Mount Marker 36 for two weeks. Just watching? Watching it burn. So tell me, tell me, you know, we know why why everything got destroyed. So so what happened last year, they, they claim 
all the small stuff came down now. We just got the little stuff. This year we're getting the big stuff. We're talking boulders, tips of trees. We're gonna get red. We already got some this year already. These poor guys. We just cleaned out one of the middle acequias and uh, wasn't uh, like two days after it was cleaned, it got re resedimented all the way up to the top. So, And then with Bima, you gotta go and start the process all over again to get it re-cleaned. So there's another, another month or two months trying to get it all done again. And they haven't done nothing to help the problem with the flooding. It's just, okay, we'll clean the ditch, and then you're kind of on your own after that. I haven't ha talked to one person that's wanted to do mitigation where the flooding's coming from. So, and that's where a lot of our problems lie, is we need to fix the problem before it gets to the Sekias, and, and nobody wants to, to follow or listen through on that, because that's going to be a lot more money, a lot more time. There you go. That's the money. And he's right. I, I, I skipped on that point thoroughly. We know what's going on down here already. We know we see it. what's going to get hit. We're just fixing. So now we got to go up on top. We're just fixing symptoms. Fixing symptoms instead of uh, the root cause of the issue. Right. So that's. Well, and they got it figured out. Because look, everything's green now, right? So they think that we see everything green that we're going to be okay. That's just grass and stuff. Don't get damn tricky. That's what the first thing the government does anytime they do something like this. They they go and. Do, you know how much they're spending, spending on seeding in this county? $14,000 an acre, 300 and some acres are getting uh, seeded. That's why everything's green, but that's not going to hold the water or the boulders or the tips of the trees. All that seeds ended up back in the river. Well, I know the chips are in a <laughs> ditch already. <laughs> yeah, it's a... Uh, well, the turkeys are... Just this, <laughs> just this last flood we got, I pulled out probably 10 dump truck loads out of sediment out of my, my hay fields. So, I mean, it's, it's still just coming down like crazy. Go ahead, sir. Has the state legislature gotten involved in any way in trying to understand the situation and then maybe going to help you guys out in the federal government? Well, a lot of us have, have tried to talk to FEMA, Angela Gladwell. She was supposed to have a meeting with a group of people on the flooding and on tree damage and the ruling of that stuff. I think we talked to her, what, three months ago? Two months. Two months ago? She's the head of uh, Urban Speed Calf Canyon. She's in charge of all that money that's coming down the pipe. Not even a single phone call. I mean, I have John Barkley, a bunch of people calling her. We're supposed to go to the table and discuss these things. They won't call us. They won't talk to us. They wanted our input. They wanted our input, but then when we call back, so... Has the state legislature been involved at all? Yeah, just, just uh, uh, Fernandez and, and Ben Ray. No, I mean the state legislature. No, the legislature, it's over. I mean... Have they investigated any of this? No. Form a committee to understand... No, what they're saying is everybody's going to be made whole, just wait. That's what they say? Well, that's what the President of the United States said. A year ago, he said we're going to be made whole, we're just waiting. Right? I mean, that's what they, that's what everybody's told us. Got three point some billion dollars already just waiting. FEMA does everything A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way down the pipe. I told them, A, how many people got burnt out of their homes? That they should be priority. In a meeting here, I told them, they should be priority. If you go to all substances of flyer there about rebuilding, how could these people rebuild without money? So, so without money, see, I, I'm already starting to put a pipe over the over the second mother and home because I'm getting I get flooded from 518 twice. So, I mean, I got destroyed. I had 36 pickup loads of debris in that the field that I I just cut. A field normally I cut. 1,400 bales of cut, this year I got 700. It's still destroyed. So, I know that flooding's gonna come again. I'm gonna get that water, I'm gonna pipe it over the sink and onto the field just, just so we can start separating some of this water. But where's the state? The state, you know what they've been doing? They've been building a model. They told me the, they're building a model for that area. But nobody comes. Nobody comes to talk about it. 
I mean, I mean, everybody's in the same situation. Every Aseca, every Aseca, and, 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 and this area is in the same situation. No, no, nobody's coming. In. Has, the, has the governor's office got involved? How would they understand Aseca situation? Election year, they were here. Well, they were fine. Yeah, that's true. Election year. When, <laughs> when they were running, I told. Remember, I explained that to you. When they were running, they talked to us, but they won't pick up the phone now. She's not running for me. And we didn't get a penny from the legislature. Well, I think it's just going to have to take hard work and a lot of a lot of will. I think it's just going to take our community for us to get together as a community and plan what we want for the future. If we want to save our water rights. We need to unite. You know, we have water systems in the community. They can't separate a water right from the from a from a. It's there's a water right in a property that own, that has a home. They can't separate that water right from that. And and so we should be talking together, the community, because if we want to protect our community and our way of life, we're going to have to do it. We cannot expect anybody else to do it for us. And we need to unite ourselves and, and really think about what we would like for our future of our community. Because there's an opportunity to do it now because of this disaster. And I think that if we want to make it happen, we need to come together as a community. We have to set the stage because the government isn't going to do it for us. They're going to come and, and try to make us become another urban community or become or take our water rights and do with it whatever we want. But if we want to protect that, it's up to us. And I think that, that we just need to be unified as our culture, as our community. This place should be packed today with community people to learn how to protect what we have. And and it's 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 hard to get our community to participate. And, but I think we have enough people, le leaders in our community. If we come together, we can organize all of that together. And just, we have younger people that are getting involved. And I think that, you know, we don't need to separate what we're doing. We just need to unite and all work together to make it happen. Yeah. That's basically what I'm going to ask uh, Herman Speed Cap Canyon for his equipment because now the situation has changed. We can't dig these ditches out with a shovel anymore. So we need uh, many excavators, different things to do this stuff ourselves. That way, that way the money comes to the Seca and stays with the Seca instead of hiring contractors and then the money just leaving town. There's a lot of things that have to change, but will it? The only way I think it can is what, is what you're saying is that we come together and we ask for it. But then who's going to do the legwork? Well, who's going to do, do the legwork? Because it gets to it gets to this point right here, but it never reaches anyone over there in Santa Fe. Just like what Jose is saying now too. Well, How come they're not here? Were they invited? Do we need to invite them? I mean, that's 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 a bottom line. If they were sitting here, maybe they could answer why they. Why they're not collectively helping? The Asequias probably need to form an alliance. We've just formed an alliance with the water systems, and and hopefully that together we can be stronger when we go after any funds that are needed to improve our water systems. The same thing happens with the Asequias. Form an alliance between all the different Asequias, and and go together. The issue that you gotta really understand that these waters in this county have, are not adjudicated, and they never will be. We don't need the government. That's what, that's the only way we're left alone. Because mm -hmm. that's what they want us to do. Yeah. They want us to sell out, and we won't. Yeah. I'll, ne I'll never be part of an adjudication process in this yeah. valley. Okay. Not since I was just big until the guy. Yeah, and that's what the government wants from us. Mm -hmm. yeah. They want us to become, very much to the become adjudicated. That no. way they can tell us, and they can monitor each and every head gate, and tell us, you get a cup of water, you get a cup of water, you get a cup of water, the risk goes down to Texas. And that's not going to ever happen. Well, that, that's, 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 a, a, that's the invite that they want. And that's the reason why we need to work together because as, as, as associations and groups in our community, we need to all have the same message. 
we all need to say if we don't if I don't understand it, I can learn it from you and understand it from you. And and those type of things because a lot of times you don't understand. But notice why when we start things. asking the government for more help, that's the first thing that they want. They want these waters to be adjudicated and then they'll help us. And that's can that can happen. Well that's why that's we control. have to stand together strong together and say no, that's not gonna happen here. We're stronger as one force. Yeah. If we all get together, all the executives, and we're not saying we have to be adjudicated, nothing like that. But if we all stand together, we're louder yeah. to get this done. Because it's not just one executive, it's all these executives that have been affected. And so if we stand together and mm -hmm. be a united front, then we might get something somewhere. Or they might just piss off to piss on us and say, Okay, so so Wednesday at five thirty at the VFW, there's going to be a, a meeting for all of this, okay. but all of the government entities are going to be there. So that that's the one that I wish everybody would attend. Also, this one, but, but that one's going to be the, the these are the, these people are going to be sitting there. The same people that are evaluating our damages are going to be sitting there, and the, those are all the people that we got to ask these questions to. Yeah. What what are they? Going to, when are they going to help us? What are they going to help us with? We already know money's coming, but who's going to take it? That's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, That's but what I'm saying. we, we yeah. don't need to tell them when are you going to help us. How are you going to help us? We're going to tell them this is what you, we need and this is what we expect from you. Okay. I mean, you have to approach it in a strong approach because, because if we want to protect our community, we have to tell them what we want, not what they want. Yeah. What do we want? How do we expect them to help us? This is what we want and this is what we'll accept. Because if, if we ask them, they're going to tell us what, what to do. But if we tell them what we want them to do, they should approach it. Well, me gusta la plática, excuse me. Me gusta la plática. But I want to give these gentlemen a big hand for her. And uh, we're going to be a little tired tonight, so I'm going to bring up the next person. But thank you so much. All right, we'll see you guys. Gracias.